This altar, we have here a big statue of one of the archangels. Okay. We have three archangels whose feast we celebrated recently. Okay. One is Michael, who is here. Mm -hmm. We have Gabriel, who gives messages, yeah. like he met uh, Mother Mary and gave the message. So also to Zachariah. And we have uh, Archangel Raphael, who gives good health. So he intercedes for that. So here is Michael. Why have they kept him? For protection. He is the one who protects them. So he's very important in the you know overall maintenance of the place. Maintenance of the place. He looks up. And on top is our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. It's a, a feast we celebrate on the 8th of December. So she intercedes for us. So uh, Mother Mary, that's it. Now here you can see a couple of, you know, uh, bones which are relics of the saints. Some of them are yeah. kept there. So, now, you will say, but whose uh, relics are these? What happened was, there was in uh, 1759, the Jesuits were expelled from Goa. Okay. Now, the Jesuits were known to keep all the records well. Okay. But these records, in probably in 1835, they just burned them. Yeah, because there was some kind of thing and you know, they just burned everything. But the Jesuits were expelled. Now when the Jesuits were expelled, the others came in and they did not know much about this. So the exact history of it we do not have now. But we will do research and find out if it is somewhere. So this altar is uh, dedicated to Angel Michael. Michael. Yeah. Now, we will go to the chapel on the south. This is the most important chapel. Yes. All right? Yes. I will tell you a little more about it. So, Remo, let me tell you about the mausoleum, the casket, and the body of St. Francis Xavier. Okay. The body of St. Francis Xavier was brought to this church in 1624. 1624? Yeah. It was soon after he was made a saint. He was made a saint on the 12th of March, 1622. Okay, so uh, 22 he was made saint, saint. and then uh, the body came here on 24. So two yeah. years it was, yeah. it took. So where did it there come was... from? It was in the uh, uh, College of St. Paul's. Okay. Saint Co the uh, College of St. Paul's was given to him when he came to Goa in 1542. Okay. 1542 okay. it was given to him. Wow. And then he went on his journeys and did the work. He died in 1552 on the 3rd of December. Okay. Yeah. okay. He arrived in Goa on the 6th of May in 1542. Okay. So he worked 10 years in this in that area. Yeah. Okay. So once he died, then he was not embalmed at all. In fact, they wanted to get his bones to go up. So what did they do? They put two uh, bags of lime okay. below and two bags of lime on top so that he would deteriorate. Okay. Okay. So then he would uh, deteriorate in four months time and they would be able to bring his bones. Now what happened was when they exhumed him in the island of Sanxian where he was buried off China coast, they found his body intact. Oh, nothing yeah. happened. Yeah. So then they removed a little bit of his uh, piece of his leg mm -hmm. and then afterwards he bled after four months. And they took it to the ship and they said, okay, what do we do now? We will take him like this only to the ship okay. and keep him open 
so that the salt water evaporation will work on the lime and he will decompose. Correct. But that did not happen. So they took him to the place called Malacca, which is Malaysia, uh -huh. and they buried him like this oh. in a church with no uh, coffin. No coffin. No coffin. Just put him in the mud so that the mud and the stones, stones were put on top, of course, the mud was down, he would decompose. Correct. But when they exhumed him now on the 15th of August, 1553, mm -hmm. they found him again intact. But he was bruised. You know, the mud and the stones had worked Correct. on his body. They damaged him. So he even bled there. So when they brought him out, they said, we will never again bury him. So that's what they did. They did not bury him. They brought him to Goa. Okay. So they brought him to Goa and then there was a big fanfare because they already considered him a saint. A lot of miracles were taking place when they touched his body and they worshipped him. It was fantastic. Now, when they brought him, they brought him to the church that side at the Se Cathedral. Okay. From there, they took him to St. Paul's College and they kept him there till he was made a saint. A saint. And then they brought him to this church mm -hmm. on uh, in uh, 15, 1624. Okay. When they brought him here, they kept him on that side. So they had kept yeah. him on that side. And since that place was very inconvenient, they built this chapel. Okay. This chapel has four doors. So you can come in from any side. So, so yeah, it is four doors. Yeah, okay. four doors. It's also very good for ventilation. Correct. Now they brought him from that side and kept him here with a casket on top, Correct. which was there, it was down and it was kept here. So people could, you know, come visit him and go. Only during the Navina and feast would they be able to touch his body. Oh, okay. So people touch? Touch the body. Uh, the yeah. body. yeah. During that time. Solely for the yeah. Navina feast. Now what happened was this mausoleum, which is here, Mm -hmm. This is a gift actually from uh, Italy. It is given by Cosmos III, okay. the Grand Duke there of Tuscany. And he was given the, the pillow on which uh, St. Francis Xavier was okay. sleeping. Okay. So when he died, he was kept on the pillow. So that pillow was given to him as a gift. So he considered this a great honor mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. the uh, pillow of such pillow. a great saint. Yeah. And so uh, what he did was he asked them to build this. They took it 10 years wow. on jo uh, Giovanni Battista Forgini, the sculptor of that time, mm -hmm. he did this. It's a beautiful one. So down there is this whole base on which there is this part, which is the sarcophagus in a way. And on top is the balustra. Okay. And on top of that is the casket. casket. When was this done? First the, the casket was down. Correct. But later on, when this came here, the casket was put on top. But let me tell you something else. That casket was not fully like this. Because yeah. in uh, 1635, there was a Jesuit who came here mm -hmm. on his way to Japan. His name was Marcello Mastrelli. Okay. Now what happened to Marcello Mastrelli? So he was supervising a church there. Uh, and the hammer fell from the mason and it hit him on the head and he was completely um, uh, what call it? Like he fainted. fainted and he was in coma oh. this happened on the 12th of December 1633 okay. now they started praying for him they were, the novena had just taken place in the feast so they started praying to him that uh, he gets well you know? So to St. Francis Xavier yeah. that this guy would be uh, revived. So on the 4th of January, he was going to die. Oh. So they gave him extreme unction and they said, okay, now let us pray for him. But that evening, St. Francis Xavier appeared to him and said, you're not going to die. You're going to die a martyr two years later okay. in Japan. And in the meantime, you also have the Navina of Grace. So a second Navina to St. Francis Xavier started from then. Yes. Now, he has one novena which starts on the 24th of uh, December, uh, November and goes to the 2nd of December. 
and this is the second one which starts on the 4th of uh, March and goes till the 12th of March. Now, when that casket was down and Mastrelli came here, mm -hmm. then what happened was he said, this is such a great thing, he needs a better casket. Yes. So they made, he ordered for a better thing to be done on top. So the top part was done at that time and he had left for Japan. Okay. So when he left for Japan uh, in 1637, they got this done and they kept it down. Okay. But in 9, 16, 980, uh, 1698, they brought this one Marcel. and they fixed it here. Okay. From then on, the casket went right on top. Straight on top. Now, it became very difficult for the people to have access to it. Sorry. It became yes. a little further. <laughs> yes. So that was one of the disadvantages. Mm -hmm. It was only in uh, 1952 when there was an exposition. Okay. At that time, they decided not to touch the body anymore. Otherwise, still then, at every exposition, they could touch the body. Now, why did that happen? Yeah. It happened because people started taking small pieces of his body or hair oh. as relics. And that yes. was not good. Then. Yes, that's So right. they stopped you know, touching him. Okay. And they ordered for a glass urn. And that also came from Italy. Okay. And they put him in that glass urn. And from then onwards, no one can touch him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But it is a miracle that in spite of it being closed, closed with the skin is still holding on to the body and to the bones. Mm -hmm. That is something really mm -hmm. marvelous. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. So the metals are silver on the casket? Yeah. So let me tell you, how is the casket done? Cut. The casket has a wooden case. Okay. And on, on top of that is the uh, uh, cloth, a white cloth, on which is put the uh, flannel cloth. A red flannel cloth, yes. a pink type. Mm -hmm. yeah. ah, so yeah. that's that. Yeah. And on that is fixed the silver, uh, you know, this thing. Life of, his no. life is there down and other things. Like, no? nice. So the designs are like that fixed on it. Yeah. So this is how it is done over there. And uh, it was only in uh, 1554, they removed these panels so that they could have a partial exposition of the body. Yes. Otherwise, they could Otherwise, not see. Yeah, they there, couldn't see. Oh, there are oh. panels there. Yeah? Correct. So those panels are removed, and there two panels are removed so that you can see his face. Yes. So yes. there is kind of partial exposition throughout the year yes. that takes place. Now, after many years, we have also planned that whole thing, mm -hmm. and we did this job last year in in 2020, so from okay. December till February, mm -hmm. and we got that done. Now, you can see here, there is also the life of St. Francis Xavier. There are four bronze uh, kind of slabs here, yeah. yes. which are depicting his life. Correct. And in each one, they show one one thing about him. Here, they show a lot of people, and that, you know, he is you know, bringing them to God. To God, yeah. And the other side, he's baptizing them, bringing them to new life in God. At the back, there is one in which there are those headhunters. Okay. They're very rough kind of people. But even then, he is not afraid. He says, and later on, he goes back and he has converted them and they become good persons. Yeah. And the last panel there is on his death in the island of Sancha. Yeah. So this, uh, now, what was happening was, when the people used to come, one of the ladies, she bit his toe and took it home. Oh, so, yes. So that toe was being later brought and she will give it back. Okay. And we have kept it in the reliquary, which reliquary. is there. Oh, nice. This reliquary was done much later. It was done in 1552. Okay. It was done much later. But from then on, we give blessings with it. And of late, we have started blessing people from here in the evenings, especially because of COVID times. Okay. People cannot come here, okay. so we decided let's pray for them from here. Okay. And a lot of people received the blessings you know, in the evenings, from 6 to uh, 8 to 9 sometimes. Including my mother. 
Yeah. So a lot of wonderful things are happening uh, with the relics, many benefits. So this is about the mausoleum. Now inside there are a lot of paintings, there are yeah, 32 was, paintings. Yeah, I was just coming to that only, yeah. I want to know about the paintings. Yeah. It's all depicting his life oh, nice. and the different scenes of his life. Including on top as well there are paintings done on the wall, done on wood. Correct. And it's yeah. This place was gilded in gold but later on the gilting went away for some reason or the other. But oh, it was scraped off. Yeah. Like yeah. living this thing. But yeah, how come it's intact here and not Yeah, here? so probably here they removed it for some reason okay. or the other because okay. in 1759 <clears throat> the Jesuits were round up and they were suppressed from Goa. They could not remain in Goa. So all the properties, everything was oh. confiscated from the Jesuits okay. and then slowly started the suppression of the society in 1773. Okay. So there was no Jesuit presence here. And that is why most of the things, you know, it was a very richly donned church. Yes. But like that slowly, slowly, things started disappearing from here. Well, I'm really fascinated to see these intricate and minute handiworks and crafts. They look so surreal. It's really mesmerizing. This is so ornamental and the paintings are a reminder of time and yes, St. Francis Xavier, please give me your blessings and be with me and my family forever. Thank you, Father. This was wonderful. I think uh, this was the Indeed. best experience of my life. And thank you for doing this, Father. Thank you for coming here, Remo. It is a pleasure to have you. And remember, we are keeping you in our prayers. And St. Francis Xavier will bless you and all your works and all your projects. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you, Father, so much for your guidance. Uh, it means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And grateful that you are here with us and all the things that you are doing for St. Francis Xavier. May he reward you and all your projects as well. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Yes. Thank you. See you. Thank you for joining me. This is wonderful. It was such a pleasure having you, Ramo. Yes, thank you so and much. I wish you a long life stay as fit you as you are thank you so much for doing this you're a wonderful this. human being thank you and uh, i will keep seeing you yep yeah so take care till then take care take care